Yes, I think that you, uh, there are issues with promoting it in the media. Um, unfortunately, all too often you hear about the negatives. You hear about the problems or you don't hear about the good stuff at all, as in what you were, what you were saying. And that's an issue that we have to address too. But I think it's a wider GA issue as well. In that, uh, you know, the GA are going to, I think nationally, they're just going to have to look at finding um, a more effective way of promoting their game. On a wider on a wider scale, but again, the hurling development committee, I'm sure, will have an idea of, or two of that as well. But giving the games, giving competitions a bit of status is most important. Is most important, and maybe a few resources as well for their success. Don't ask me about resources because I don't know. I don't know what resources we have other than good intentions at the moment. Uh, uh, I suppose one of the problems is that you have 32 counties and uh, they're like 32 republics with 32 governments and uh, how well one um, county board will promote the game um, compared to another, that's, uh, that's another part. But it's all about getting it all knitted together. It is, yeah. And I suppose part of the, again, the Hurling Development Committee are looking at two areas. One is the, the coaching and the other one is, and it started already again, is to have Hurling Mentor for every hurling county in uh, in tier two, three and four. And that has started already and they've managed to get in terrific people to work with counties. For instance, Derwood Healy is working with Offaly, Paddy, Paddy Butler with Westmeath, Brendan O'Sullivan is the hurling mentor for Meath, Michael Dignan for Longford, uh, uh, some Willie Carley, the West, well, former Westford player with Carlo, and uh, Liam Sheedy is with Tyrone, Eamon O'Shea, the Tipperary or Tipperary trainer, he's with Donegal. Michael O'Grady, former Dublin trainer, he's with Derry. Humphrey Kelleher with Armagh. Joe Dooley's with Antrim. And they have a, th those mentors have a very specific job to do. Uh, they've got to go in and they've got to liaise with the hurling support groups within the counties. And it's been recognised fairly well in recent years. There's no one size fits all. Every county has different issues, has different potential. And the mentor, one of the role the mentors have is to help to identify that potential and see can they, can they, can they develop it further. But these are people who have very willingly and very easily given of, the, given of their time and their knowledge and expertise to help counties to maybe get over um, roadblocks that are within the county, maybe externally. But there's, there's a good plan there for them. And... They have to report monthly to the Hurling Development Committee. So we will be getting, uh, we are already getting a huge amount of feedback from each of the counties. And the counties themselves are given the opportunity to try to plan meaningfully how to improve the quality of hurling and to improve participation in hurling. And I suppose that's one of my babies in that I would like to see every, every child in the country, every child on the island having the opportunity to play uh, to have meaningful coaching and to play meaningful games. And I think that is hugely important because we'll always have we'll always have great players and great skill and so on in the strong traditional counties. But we need to improve the quality of skill and the quality of the games, but also participation because we also need to create fans. And I think if any youngster gets a good experience, however short it is with a sport, they'll always be well disposed to that sport in the future. And, you know, you have, to you, have to, you have to create and you have to work on a fan base as well through participation. And I think that'll be an important part of our, of, of, of our remit on the Hurling Development Committee. Now, your Hurling Development Committee writes, we talk about Tier 2 and Tier 3. Then we kind of look across the board and we see, well, uh, maybe that Hurling might be struggling a, a, a little bit in, in, in Wexford, might be struggling a bit in Leash. You know, the counties that were traditional uh, counties that uh, put it up to the best of them over the years, might, uh, you know, some of them mightn't have won a whole lot. But uh, have you any any role to play in, 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 in their future? Well, I suppose part of the, the, the WIT initiative is, um, is, is targeted at those counties. That's part of it. Um, <clears throat> the, history of, the history of hurling development over the years has been that the, the, the counties that you mentioned, they have come and gone. As I mean, uh, you know, Wexford, everybody's looking at Wexford at the moment, but Wexford is a football county until the 1950s. That's what people forget. And... They okay. They've come. They had. I suppose they've had forty. They've had. They've had, they've had fifty years of fifty great years of hurling, and they, they're struggling. They're struggling at the moment. But um, 
there are the some of the other counties that you mentioned again you take Leash, my own county, they come they've come they've come and gone over time. And I think what what we have to try and do is try and find some way of helping them to have a base level of consistency, which is good. And that when their good players come along, and maybe only players, good, a good good team might come along maybe only every 20 years, but when they do, that there's a platform there for them to develop further. And that's where the, that, that I think is the role of the Early Development Committee, to make sure that there's a, that there's a, a standard there that they can be at, a minimum standard that can be at, of coach development, participation, all those other things, so that if the good players come or when the good players come along, that they can benefit from it. Right, uh, you say you're from the same parish as Liam O'Neill? I am, yeah, a different club. Um, and one of the, <laughs> well, naturally, is right, one of the problems that be devils, uh, I've, I've always felt uh, developing in, in Leash, is that uh, there's a multitude of clubs in parish. There's no parish rule strictly applied. And uh, Leem's Club is the rural... I, I come from a very small town, Mount Rath, and there's a relatively small rural hinterland, and uh, Leem's Club is from about a quarter of that rural hinterland. I think there are about 60 houses in, 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 in his club. They only play hurling. And uh, they've, they've found... Even though they managed to win an intermediate championship in Leash a number of years ago, but I think emigration about two years later nearly finished them. So th 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 they're struggling, and... Uh, I, I suppose we have we've an we've an under, we've we have we have some understanding anyway of where the ch where the challenges are and uh, nobody is underestimating the challenges. But uh, from this from the point of view of this committee, I think we can only do good, and I think we can be uh, we can we 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 try to be we as constructive and positive as possible. But see, you know, there's there's fantastic work going on around the country but it doesn't get the publicity. What gets the publicity is, we'll say, if the Cavan hurlers fail to field or Longford fails to field. And that's, 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 only, one, that's, on, that's only of one end of it. And the, the national press go to town on it for a couple of days, and they forget about it then. But they also forget that, you know, in those counties, there's lots of work being done. There's a fabulous programme happening at the primary schools in Cavan at the moment. And it's been run by a grandson of the great Martin Og Morrissey. And it's a wonderful development programme being done through the primary schools. Uh, there's, there's, there's something like 50 primary schools in Cavan involved in it, and it can, only bear, it can only bear good fruit. But you don't get to hear much about that. Given that the two are from the one parish and two different clubs, and uh, now you've united, uh, those two clubs wouldn't come together, no? Well, let's say... <laughs> We're, 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 I doubt it very much. <laughs> very, very. They, they, they do. They meet up for weddings and funerals and stuff like that, all right. But uh, no, it's, again, there's organisation can be an issue in, in counties. Kilkenny have got it right for, for, for very, very many years. And I suppose, again, looking at the history of GA and Kilkenny, it was only when the single parish rule came in that things started getting really right. Life was haphazard before that, it has to be said. And, you know, the success of Kilkenny before that depended on a couple of outrageously strong clubs down the years. But when they, when, when they weren't, you know, um, when, when they declined any little bit at all, there was a need for change. But Kilkenny have always seen it. They, they've led the way in terms of in, in hurling development for so, so long in every respect and it's like that it's it's a model that people the, the the development model that people should be looking at is that in, is in Kilkenny not that necessarily that Carlo hurlers will ever necessarily challenge to win four all Ireland senior hurling championships in a row but if you if you look at the model and try to tweak the model to your own requirements and try to improve and improve competitiveness, it's amazing what can happen. And I say, I go back to Mount Leinster Rangers as a, a club that has done that and has dished out enough lessons to junior and intermediate teams and some senior teams around Kilkenny in their time. And uh, they're now going so wonderfully well. That's the, that's, that's the way to go. There you have it, Tommy Lanigan, and uh, he's chairman there of the Hurling Development Committee. So great stuff from... Uh, for him and uh, congratulations to him is, uh, is a great honour and uh, we wish him well in his role. Somebody wondering about the time of the match on Sunday.